We're going to get started with our recipes app now. So we're going to go ahead and create a new app by running python manage.py start app and we're going to call it recipes. The first thing we're going to do is create a new model that we can use in order to create, update and read and delete our recipe. So we'll give it a class and we'll call that recipe. So the class name will actually be our table name and that's going to extend from the models.model which is Django's built-in model class for the ORM. So we'll just add a doc string comment in here to say that this is a model to create and manage recipes. So the first field we'll give it is a user and that's going to be a foreign key on our user model. So we'll pass in the user. We'll give it a related name and we'll also give it an on delete of models dot cascade. Okay, so the foreign key is a relationship to another table. Okay, so we're gonna have, we have our user table, which was built in. So we've already created our super user, for example, and that is our user. So for every recipe that we create, we want it to be linked to a user record from another table. The reason for that is we need a way to check later if the owner of the recipe is the person who's trying to edit it or delete it okay because we don't want other users being able to go and delete them so we're giving it a related name so a related name enables us to access it a bit easier with a shorthand and then the on delete models.cascade means if the parent record which will be the parent user record is deleted then it will also delete any recipes so in order to use this we need to actually import the user model so from django.contrib.auth.models we'll import the user so the next field that we want to create is a title field so we will have a models.char field so this will just be a plain text field we're going to give it a max length of 300 and a null equals false and a blank equals false. So the null equals false and blank equals false means that they won't be able to submit the form unless they actually fill anything in because it can't be blank or null. So there is certain fields that we will allow to leave blank and some that we don't want to be blank. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to have a description and this one again is going to be a char field and we'll give this a max length of 500 characters. We'll also ensure that this is non-nullable and also cannot be left blank. So the next one that we want to add is the instructions. So this one is not going to be a regular text field. So we're actually going to have a rich text field um, in order to use that. So we want the users to be able to format the text that they're doing, whether they want to put it in bullet points or add a little bit of different styling with the paragraphs. So in order to do that, we're going to need to install another package. So we're going to pip install that and it's going to be called the Django rich text field. So we'll now go ahead and create the new instructions field and that will be a rich text field we're going to give this one a max length of 10,000 characters and again null equals false and blank equals false. Okay so we have the squiggly lines at the minute which is telling us it can't find that module so we need to go ahead and import that at the top. So we'll go ahead and import that from DJ rich text field 
dot models import rich text field okay so now we have access to that one so we're actually going to have the exact same for the ingredients so we'll just copy this and we will call that ingredients so the next thing we want to add in is images so we're going to have an image and this one we're going to use a package called Django resized so we'll go ahead and call that resized image field and we're going to give it a size of 400 and none so what this means is whenever we go to upload the file if it's larger than 400 in width we want it to shrink it to 400 width and the none will allow it to scale so that it automatically sets the height we'll then give it a quality of 75 we'll give it an upload path so upload to and that's going to go to recipes so we haven't currently set this up but we will be using Cloudinary to store these files so it will create a folder called recipes in our Cloudinary once we have that set up and then we're actually going to force format the files so we want to use WebP format because that's next gen smaller file formats um, and best practice and then again that we'll make sure that they can't leave that null or blank so we're going to go ahead now and actually install the resized package so we'll pip install django resized so while we're at it we will freeze our requirements And then we'll go ahead and import that at the top. So next I'm actually going to have a field called image alt. Now the reason for this is it's more accessible to have good descriptive alts on your images so that they are read out users of assistive technology correctly now obviously when we don't know what the user is uploading we don't know how to adequately describe that so allowing them to add a good image alt themselves um, will just allow us to make it that bit more accessible so we'll have a chart field with a max length of 100 we'll add null equals false and blank equals false so next we're actually going to use the choices so it's going to be a text field as well but we want it to be a select drop down so we're going to add some choices in there so we're going to call this one meal type and it will be a models.char field it'll have a max length of 50 and we're going to give it some choices which we will call meal types and we will make those in a second and then we're going to give it a default value of breakfast which will be the first one that is shown on the select drop down list so I'm actually going to go ahead and paste that in so you may pause the video for a second if you want to copy that over I'm also going to copy in the next one which is going to be our cuisine types and we'll go ahead then and create those cuisine types so that is going to be another char field with a max length of 50 choices are equal to cuisine types and the default will be the first in alphabetical order so it will be African 
Next we're going to add a calories field and this one is just going to be an integer field. So later on when we do our meal planner side of it, we want them to be able to select how many calories and things that they have uh, or they want for their meals and it will go off and search the database and find things within range. So we will have that one in for later. So then the last one we're going to have is a posted date so that we are enabled to order those recipes by the newest first. So this one's going to be a date time field and we're going to give it an auto now of true. So what that will do is it will automatically insert the date time in which that was added. So now we're going to give it a class meta. So class meta will allow us to order them. So whenever we make out a call to get recipes from the database, they will come back with our ordering. So we're going to give it an ordering of posted date with the newest first. And last but not least, we will add our string method. So we're going to give it a self so that it can refer to this instance of this record. So we're going to return the string of self.title. Okay, so whenever I go off and I get an object, if I was to print that in the terminal, what it would bring back will bring back the title. We still have access to all of the properties, but the object will display by the string method of its title. I've just noticed a typo there. I've written black, so we'll just <laughs> update that one on the image alt to blank. Um, before we can go ahead and actually use this model or make our migrations files, we do need to install another package. Now, because we're working with images and we're changing the images and uploading them, we need a package called Pillow. So Pillow is the Python image library, so we'll go ahead and pip install Pillow. And we'll go ahead and freeze those requirements. So if we were to run make migrations now, nothing would happen because we haven't actually told Django that our recipes app exists yet, so it wouldn't be able to detect those changes. So we'll go ahead into our installed apps and add in our recipes app. Now we'll go ahead and type python manage.py make migration. So as we discussed earlier, this is us whenever we create or update a model, we need to make migrations to create those instructions files. So if we have a look now in this migrations folder, we'll have this initial migration. So this is our instruction file specifying what the name of our table is, which one's the primary key, and the different fields that we want. So next we need to go ahead and actually make that migration so our table is created. So we can do that by running python manage.py migrate. And that applies our changes. So if we want to go ahead and actually look at this, then we need to update our admin.py file because we won't be able to see what's in there otherwise if we go into the Django backend. So I'm going to go ahead in here and I'm going to import our new model. So from dot models, which is just from the models in this directory, import recipe. So we'll go ahead then and we'll register that. So we'll say admin.register. We will give it the model name. We'll then create a class called recipe admin. And that's going to extend from admin.modeladmin. We will then give it a list display of all of the fields that we want. So we're going to say we want to be able to see the title, the meal type, 
the calories. The instructions. The ingredients. the image. I'm then going to add a list filter. So what that will do is allow us to be able to filter by meal types on the admin panel. So we'll go ahead now and we will start up our application. And we will go to the admin panel, log in with the super user we created earlier. And from here we can now see the recipes table. So we won't actually be able to add one yet because we haven't set up our rich text field settings in the settings.py file. So we would just be met with an error on that. So that's the first thing we will do on the next video.